Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. To make a life worth living, we have to be allowed, in a way, to do so. If we start to live in a Third Reich society, then we have families that turn and churn lives to keep us out of life, to keep us out of relationships, to keep us out of intimacy, and to keep us out of wealth. You see, in this lifetime, we can do that old-time show called Let's Pretend. So let's pretend for a moment that you're someone of consequence, that you've made a life, you've done a good job, you didn't make big bucks, but you made enough to live on, but at some point you lose someone important in your life. When you lose that person who's so significant to your soul, you just aren't quite the same. Anyone who's lost a parent, anyone who's lost a friend, anyone who's experienced someone who's died on them before they thought things would end, knows what loss is. A child who has gone through loss may not have experienced her loss completely. A child that has gone through a transition, a difficulty, an illness, a mental catalyst of things may not be okay today. But what we're talking about is the concept of let's pretend. So let's pretend you've just lost your loving partner of 20 plus years. Let's pretend you've just lost your son that you've taken care of all these years. Let's pretend they died. Let's pretend they died to protect their life from the lies of people around the world who want to ruin a life for their own concept and control of your world. Let's pretend that your siblings turned on you and started to lie about you because there's inheritance to be had. And if they can mark you mentally unwell, then there's more for them to be bad with or to have. Let's talk about how selfish their children are that their children have received all kinds of wealth, all kinds of support, all kinds of birthday checks from your loving parents, but that's not enough. That the actual siblings want more and more and more for their families and don't want to be anything but rough. Let's talk about how typically any type of legacy, any type of, of finances from a man's estate is established or disseminated. Typically, most people will pick one of two paths. They might pick the Warren Buffett path, which is his belief that you don't leave anything to your children, so they'll go off and make their own living. That has some concepts, but it has no concepts of God. Because the concept in Jesus' heart, the concept written about in all the Bibles around the world and all the translations of any type of concept of God, talk about how we leave a legacy for our children to go on with, so that our kingdoms will come and not go. When I'm talking about these things, I'm talking about being incredibly well-read. Far better read than any person that's been attacking my life, I can guarantee it. While you might be reading things for your industry, I highly doubt you're reading things on God. You see, for me, I have a right to hobbies. For you, you have a right to hobbies. But my hobbies are reading religious works on God. I enjoy it immensely. I learn a great deal, and my spirituality expands instead of contracts, if you will. When I do these audio casts, I'm doing them mainly for myself, to create posterity, perhaps, but to piss all over the people that have lied, stolen, and cheated me is true. God in heaven is not pleased with them at all, because his number one rule is, I am your Lord, your God, and you will have no other before me. But what these people have been doing has been placing their lives or my life before the Lord. They're not doing it in a way of submission. They're not doing it in a way of concession. They're not doing it in any way that is talked about in any work of anthropological or historical or religious merit around the world. They're doing it in an arrogant way that makes it not okay. Now whether I'll get the right let's pretend concept going, it may take a while for me to do that. But here's what we talk about in Magic and Mayhem. We talk about the magic of how God still feeds me and the mayhem of how siblings and parents and other people who have deceived me won't even help me to go through a grieving process. But they don't grieve me. They want to harm me. I actually have a sibling that's just above me that is still alive. But every word out of her mouth is so ugly and so disdainful that I have no desire to be anywhere near her when I thrive. In life, we have moments of time to speak of truth. And the truth is that in families, under any let's pretend concept or any real world concept, there is often difficulty. There's often sibling rivalry. There's often jealousy. There's often immaturity because not everyone matures at the same rates in life. 
You see, if you're out in the world interacting with small business owners and executives of corporations, you are doing something very different than someone who works in a company and only has one focus in their job. You see, when you're an entrepreneur, you wear many hats. You have to be a leader, you have to be an entrepreneur, you have to be a salesman, you have to be an HR director, you have to be a financial director, you have to be an accountant, you have to be everything you can possibly be, and sadly, even a tax preparer. <clears throat> Not that the government doesn't deserve our taxes, it's just that the way that they do it makes it incredibly impossible for someone who's not that sophisticated in mathematics to do things very well. When I'm talking about things, I'm talking about things honestly, I'm talking about things truthfully, I'm talking about things that are factual. What I find amazing is how people can gang up, mob up, stock up, and lie, and their lies become actual. You see, in life we have moments of time to prove who we are in God's house, and most people today don't think one motherfucking minute about Jesus Christ, his disciples, or anything that they spent a millennium teaching the world. You see, it takes a tribe of 12 to prosper and thrive in any business environment, in any small business world. We have a lot of small businesses that are taking the pill from COVID and getting out of their work because they weren't really thriving anymore. They were barely surviving. We have plenty of real estate companies and commercial brokerages that are willing to take back the properties that they were renting to other people, but those people who rented them still have to pay for them, whether they're in their prosperity prospering or they're in their failing. You see, in life we have moments of time to decide what kind of a person, what kind of entrepreneur, what kind of an employee, what kind of a brother, what kind of a sister, what kind of a cousin, what kind of a neighbor, what kind of a friend we're going to be. And what I ask each and every person who comes up to talk to me, to play with me, to lie to me, to abuse me, and then pretend they didn't do it, is I say the same thing. On what grounds are you basing your life? On what philosophical melody, what philosophical entity, what ideology, ideology are you thinking about using for propelling your life? Because when I look at your life from the outside in, I see someone in struggle, I see someone in peril, I see someone who's miserable and is taking it out on everyone else around them or focusing all that hatred for your own self, your own life, your own worth on one individual. And it's not fair to that person at all. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about what is true and what is not true. But the soul is what is true. The body dies and fades away through cellular degeneration. We have plenty of science today to prove all that. There are plenty of birth defects that most people don't consider all birth defects a problem. Most people just learn to work around them. If you're a person with Down syndrome, you just have to figure out what level of functioning and intelligence you have with the help and loving guidance of hopefully your parents if they haven't abandoned you and literally work on keeping your love in your heart. If you're someone with a different type of birth defect that is private to you, it is not for anyone in this world to disclose to anyone else. Yet there's always that hateful gossip. There's always that bitch on wheels. There's always that immature child of God who never cared what God might think of them today. I often say to people who claim to be religious, what would Jesus think of you today? Would Jesus be pleased to welcome you into the house of heaven? You see, we never know when God is going to call us home. That's not a threat to anyone's life. That's a fact. It's a fact of life that God gave us these perils to remind us of the preciousness of life. That God gave us the ability to love, to honor, to regard, to hold dear the people of our life. But when those people literally start to turn towards selfishness and Satanism, and Satanism is a belief that you are in power and in control of someone else's life, personhood, paperwork, and property, that you have no lawful rights in the house of God too. See, the house of God writes the plan for someone. The house of God has proven to do this for a millennium. Yet there are people that want to rewrite God's plans for other people, and you sit there and look at them and go, what level of grade? Did you stop thinking and learning about God? You see, in life we can be those difficult people. We can be mouthy, we can be bossy, we can be threatening, we can be all those things, but then there are those people who totally lie and will claim we're all those things when it's totally a lie. And if you get enough people to, to mimic and to say the same thing, we end up with an Auschwitz, and I'll probably say the wrong name. But I am 
poor anymore about Jewish history only because it has gone into the years of history and ancestry. It is no longer a situation for me because I am not of Jewish lineage. I valued the Anne Frank Diaries, I understood the lessons of life, but I understood the principles of what that whole book was about. It was about saying, stop trying to fuck people out of their life with God. Stop trying to harm people, stop trying to murder people, stop trying to abuse people, stop trying to harass them to the point that they can't even eat. You see, if you really look at yourself today, if you really look at your job, if you really look at your family, are you doing everything you can to become all you can be under this lifetime that's before you and me? My guess is you're not. My guess is you didn't strive for anything higher than what you're at. My guess is you didn't look for a partner that would really love you and raise you up on God's easel, eagle's wings. My guess is you settled at some point because you were so fucking tired of how hard life can be. Maybe you became a trophy wife. Maybe you became a celebrity. Maybe you became, got your claim to fame. But now your moment in time in the public eye is over with and you've got to figure out something else to do. So we get mouthy actresses who don't know one thing about God touting their families, touting their children, which is marvelous, but it's sort of odd. You see, most people keep those things somewhat private. They share photos with friends, they show, share photos with family, but we don't usually carry a lot of our photos into the community where we're doing business, where we're producing a living, or we're producing an earning. The people that lie to themselves about their rights steal paperwork, ruin them, destroy lives around them, and they haven't figured out that they are ill in their minds. They're ill about God because they're trying to be God for people. They're ill about life because they don't understand the value of relationships and how to stay out of the negative aspects of those. And they're immature in their soul in front of people who are older, not at all, who might be younger but more seasoned in God. 